It is good to see all of you in the house of the Lord and those of you online as well. I am going to take a great risk right now. And that risk is that I know you have been seated for quite some time. So I am going to take a risk and tell you to kindly stand up and just do a little stretch, greet somebody. But the risk I'm taking is that some of you could leave the sanctuary and never come back for the service. So life is full of risks and we've got to take a few. So if you don't mind, please stand, turn to somebody close to you and just say it is good to see you in the house of the Lord. And if you're doing it with family, that doesn't count. So no cheating allowed in church. If you're greeting your family, not allowed. All right, you may be seated, please. Now, if you receive Pastor Roger's email about today's service, it said that uh, I will be bringing a short reflection on work. And uh, if you care to be honest, the best part of that email, the one good word on that email is the word short. And we'll see how short we can do this. I want to begin with a story about Mr. Smith. And Mr. Smith was a manager of a large company and he had many people working with him, under him, so on and so forth. And one day, as life would have it, Mr. Smith passed away. He died. And uh, the next day, his home phone rang and uh, there was somebody who asked for Mr. Smith. And so his wife, Mrs. Smith, said, uh, you know, Mr. Smith died yesterday. And then the voice said, oh, my sympathies, I'm sorry to hear about that. Three days later, same voice, same call, may I talk to Mr. Smith? And Mrs. Smith again says, Mr. Smith died three days ago. A week later, same voice, same call, same question, same request, may I talk to Mr. Smith, please? And uh, Mrs. Smith says, Mr. Smith died a week ago. A few days later, the call comes through again, same question, same request, and this time Mrs. Smith recognizes the voice. It's the fourth time. So Mrs. Smith says, if you don't mind my asking, you keep calling and asking for Mr. Smith, and I keep telling you he's dead, and why would you keep calling again and again? And the voice says, since you ask, let me tell you, I worked for Mr. Smith, and I was on his team, and truth be told, each time I hear those words, Mr. Smith is dead, it gives me a deep sense of delight and satisfaction. Now, some of you might be, here is one disgruntled worker, one disgruntled employee who was never happy with his work, maybe didn't get on with his boss, didn't get on with his colleagues, and so he decided to take it out in this manner. And maybe he just dragged himself to work. Maybe work was something that he had to endure more than enjoy. Now, if you think about it, in our own circles, we, I'm sure, have met at least one person who fits this category, where they drag themselves to work, where they see that work is just a grind, they go in the morning, come back in the evening, and they just end your work more than enjoy. And so today, as we prepare for Labor Day, we are preparing to take a day of rest, a day of extra rest tomorrow. As we prepare for Labor Day, I want to share two thoughts for us to reflect on what is our perspective when it comes to work. As children of God, as people of God, what is our perspective on work? Now, I know that as Fairview Church of God believers, you have uh, understood very clearly that work is an institution created by God, and you can give me all the Bible references. But in the short time that I have, I want to share two quick thoughts for our further reflection. And the first is that our work needs to be seen as calling. And uh, anytime you discuss work, anytime you discuss profession, anytime you discuss careers, there is one word that comes up. 
it is that word vocation we talk about what is your vocation what vocation are you training for uh, what uh, vocation are you preparing to pursue and we've heard of vocational training institute so on and so forth and in all of this any time we use the word vocation we are thinking about careers we are thinking about jobs we are thinking about work but there is an interesting observation i want to share with you about this word vocation the word vocation comes from the latin language and it comes from this word vocare or vocazione or vocare that's about the only latin i know by the way but that word vocare simply means your call and so any time we talk about vocation any time we talk about preparing for a certain vocation we are talking about the call we are talking about being called fulfilling our calling now some of you might say pastor ben i thought this word calling was used only when clergy and ministers and full time people answer the call of god so if that were true then the church can be divided into two the called and the uncalled and you wouldn't like to be called the uncalled biblically that's far away from the truth the bible knows only one calling for the people of god and for instance in ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 the apostle paul says i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that you walk worthy of the calling you have received one peter peter talks about that in chapter 2 he says you have been called from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and any time that word calling is used or call in these passages that i talked about where god calls his people if you have friends who read latin if you have friends who know their latin ask them to read these passages in the latin bible and any time there is the word calling you want to guess what word there is vocatione or vocare and that's really what it means we have all been called by god now when you go into work when you continue to work it is a reminder therefore that we are all going into our place of calling when we see our work as calling then we see ourselves as being placed in our workplaces as god's ambassadors and as god's instruments of hope and light when we see our work as calling we do our best whether our boss is looking at us or not because our work is what we do unto the lord when we see our work as calling we see other people in new light we are more compassionate we are more tolerant we empathize with the needs and the struggles of other people we are willing to give them second and even third chances when we see our work as calling work is much more than putting in some hours to make some money to pay the bills when we see our work as calling we see that god has placed us and when we see our work as calling our places of work our spheres of influence where we live out our values and convictions and the standards of the kingdom of god so when we talk about work we are talking about our calling the second thought that i want to share with you this afternoon are we moving fast enough neil fast enough this is my second and this is my last the second thought i want to share on work is that we need to see work as stewardship now as fairview church of god people i don't have to tell you about stewardship every year for one whole month am i right pastor roger the month of january you've been hearing sermons on stewardship i'm sure you've heard so many sermons over the years on stewardship that we could write books on it but i just want to remind us about the cardinal driver the cardinal principle of stewardship stewardship or a steward is someone who is faithful to complete the task that has been assigned 
he or she is faithful to carry out to make sure the job gets done and optimizes the resources available. Put another way, it is where a steward is able to get the job done with resources that are at hand. A steward does not sing the if-only chorus. And you're wondering what the if-only chorus. There's no song that's called if-only, but you heard the if-only chorus. You heard people say, if only I had a better boss, I would enjoy my work. If only I had a better work team, I, would, I could do much more. If only I had a better office space, I could do much more. Even saying, if only I had a better laptop, I could produce more for the company. And on and on the song goes, if only. But a steward looks at the situation seizes every opportunity there is and makes the best use of what is available. I want to tell you the story about Yitzhak Perlman, and Neil and I have talked about this story. Yitzhak Perlman, world-renowned violinist and uh, known everywhere. And Yitzhak was born, and at age four, he was stricken with polio. And since age four, Yitzhak gets about with a brace or a pair of crutches. And once when Mr. Perlman was uh, performing to a packed audience, right in the middle of his performance, a string snapped on the violin. Mr. Perlman continued to play, unfaced. He completed what he had to do. And after the program, after the performance, people gave him a standing ovation and all of that. And then one media reporter came to him and asked him, Mr. Perlman, you were playing the string snap and you continue to play. You didn't stop. You didn't ask for another violin. Tell me why. And he said, the role of the musician is to make music with what remains. The role of the artist or the musician is to make music with what remains. And even as we talk about work, even as we talk about you're going back to work on Tuesday, your snapped string might be some little limitation in your workplace. It might be a difficulty you are facing, a challenge you are facing with your colleague, with your superior. It might be something that is limiting your performance. It is constraining you. And then we learn that if we see work as stewardship, we are not driven, we are not controlled by our limitations. Our call is to make music with what remains, to do the best we can with the resources that are available. And I want to close with this passage from Colossians. Are we able to bring it up? Yes, it's there. Good. And this is the verse that I want to read, and I shall cease to preach. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Jesus Christ you are serving. So when we head out to work on Tuesday morning, may I remind all of us that we have been called to be where God has placed us. And God has called us to exercise stewardship in his name. May God bless the reflection of his word this afternoon.